How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. And for the people who don't know who you are already, what is your name? My name is Jenny Bate, and I'll have to spell both of those for you because everybody gets them both of them wrong. It's J E N I. B A T E, and the easiest way to remember it is I'm two four letter words. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> Makes everybody laugh. Oh, wow, that is perfect. Now, uh, what is your background? Um, my background actually is uh, very varied. I grew up in Wales, and the national sport there is poetry. And I did a lot of poetry as a child. Um, I did po uh, painting when I was very small, but in high school I had a really bad comment from one art teacher and I just, I just quit. And I didn't pick up the brushes again until I was in my late 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, so I suddenly discovered painting. I had an epiphany I wanted to paint again. By then I was living in uh, Southern California. And uh, I took a few classes and was lucky to have teachers who taught me about materials handling, about com uh, composition, but not about style. So I was able to very early develop my own style. Uh, I do primarily skyscapes or abstracts based on skyscapes. And interestingly, about 10 years ago, my mom gave me a little slide of me painting as a child. And I think I was about four and a half years old. And it was something and a half because it was in front of the Christmas tree and I'm born in the summer. And the, the painting that I had painting on my little easel was the way that I then remembered all my paintings were as a sky, child. Sky, 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 mountains, 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 mountains. And like, I've always painted skyscapes even since I was in like, before I was in first grade. So it's wow. always been there. And you still do that? I still do that too. Okay. Now, um, what inspires your creativity? One of my biggest inspirations is Dawn Off My Back Porch. I now live in Salton City, which looks east across the Salton Sea. And on a beautiful, uh, almost rainy day like this one, we'll get some wonderful clouds at dawn. And that's one of the biggest things that gets me out of bed in the morning and makes me have a look, what's the sky doing today? Um, I, my abstract work is also based on the ephemeral clouds and I just do them in a lot of different colors and I don't do a specific skyscape. I do a, a cloudscape and then I, I actually I, I use my signature refractured watercolor technique on them, but they have a different start point. Okay, now that's your motivation I take it. Uh, that and the fact I'm making a living out of this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good motivation. Bills is usually good motivation. <laughs> exactly, and that's an honest answer. <laughs> Perfect. Um, what is your strongest influence on your work? Uh, the fact that if we weren't living in an atmosphere on this planet, we wouldn't be here. The memory, the realization that everything is based on the water and the air in this planet, and the clouds are made of water, the, the sky is made of air, and it's the combination of those two plus light which makes uh, the beauty that we call sky and sunsets and clouds and everything like that. Okay. Now, how do you define success? Uh, sales, but also recognition. Uh, five or six years ago, I did a show in Seattle, and I figured that I had about between 10 and 12 uh, uh, pieces of art on walls in Seattle. When I actually counted up, it was oddly enough 11. Um, but I had one lady who came into my booth and recognized my work from having seen it in the desert, and another which came, who came in and recognized her work from her friend's wall. Mm. So that was, uh, that, was, that was nice. And to have people come in the booth and say, oh yes, I've seen your work in such and such a place, or I've seen you online, or something like that. Uh, or somebody came into my booth at a San Diego show and she said, I looked at the website and I like you enough work enough to come into the booth and she made a, per a couple purchases. So that's... Uh, Which, that leads me into, how do you seek out opportunities as an artist to show and sell your work? I do kind of a regular set of shows in the Coachella Valley near where I live. Um, I have a lot of connections which also say that particular shows have been tried. Um, 
uh, I may stumble across somebody, for example, at the Wrightwood Art Show, and I can't remember where I found out about Wrightwood. Somebody suggested Leo Valley Art Guild. Um, I've shown with them, I've sold with them, I now have space on their wall. Um, uh, just uh, areas that I uh, stumble upon to do my one day abs painting for absolute beginners teaching course. Uh, an email that will suggest, oh, such and such a show is at such and such a place. And then I found out this is a potential teaching opportunity also, as well as a show opportunity. Um, I use uh, cafes applications as well sometimes, although a lot of word of mouth talking to my peers, you know, what's a good show? What are you doing in May? Anything, anybody doing anything so Cal in June? Uh, a lot of word of mouth. So you basically put in the work? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm self-employed. I only work on days ending in Y. Monday through Sunday, yesterday, holidays, and today. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow never comes. That's perfect. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to steal that one. Okay. Once you give me credit. <laughs> you are. You got it. <laughs> Now, I'm going to skip over a little bit. Basically, has your style changed throughout the years? Yes. When I first started painting seriously, I started painting uh, watercolor landscapes and, and then onto skyscapes. And that's kind of where I really found the skyscapes again. And then, once you, then I tried acrylics, which I also like. Mm -hmm. And then wanting to use more of my skills in each painting. I decided to... Uh, oh, I know what I was doing. I was painting... I love birds. So I was painting birds on palm bark. I love painting on different surfaces. And uh, palm bark is really difficult to hang. You can't stick screws in the back, it'll split. So I decided that was my first mistake. Uh, this is one of these three lefts make a right story. Uh, so I decided to cut them down and put them in shadow boxes, which was the second mistake because they really didn't look good. So I gave up on the palm bark and I had a stack of uh, um, shadow boxes kicking around the bottom of the studio. So I decided to do a watercolor background and then a reverse glass acrylic painting on the beginning, on the front, on the glass. And the, the first two were fine. And then the third one, I, I cropped, I just painted this big and for a, a box this big, I just flipped it over and drew it around because I'm no good with numbers. I can't measure it. I can measure five times and still get it wrong. So I just flipped it over and then I, I'm like, oh, I got a boo-boo on this side. And that side's cut it off. I've cut off and it's perfect. I wish I could take that side and put it over there. Hello. Snip, snip, snip. Rearrange it. Ooh, I like it. So that was the beginning of my signature style. Okay. And about two years into it, having called it watercolor collage, knowing that I needed a different word than collage, uh, I was in a show where the quilting convention was also in town. And every fourth woman that walks in the booth, oh, this looks just like refractured quilting. So I asked them, what do you do? What is that? And they say, well, we quilt the same quilt three or four times. Then we cut it up and quilt it back together again. And I think, well, at least I start with entire paintings. I stole the term. I had it recognized by the International Collage Magazine out of Canada about five or six years ago, mm -hmm. refracturing as specifically, I paint the scene in its entirety one or multiple times. Uh, depending on the size I'm working to, cut it up and put it back together again. Then I've reiterated my incorporation of acrylic by not filling the entire panel with refracture. I finished off with acrylic afterwards. And I also write poetry like from my childhood um, and write for the painting and paint it into the painting. Wow, that's fascinating. I definitely Thank have you. to check by your booth and check it out. Now, come, come. my last question. Sure. What is your connection to Ontario and the surrounding communities, if any? Um, uh, currently, only historical. I think I was doing one of these searches for potential showing places. I may have picked up uh, a competition at CCMA and decided to enter it. And then I found that I could enter here, there and everywhere, uh, every now and again. And I did their first festival. Uh, at the time, I was working uh, for University of California off also in Riverside, so I, I was up in this area more often. Now I haven't been up to Ontario for, for a while. So, well, so well I'm, com I'm coming back to specifically do the show because I love the people and I love the museum. And well, what leads me to my last question. How did you enjoy uh, what did you enjoy most most about participating in Ontario's Festival of Arts? Seeing a lot of people that I already know, um, made a few sales, made a few more connections, a um, bunch of different things, and the music's good too, and, I, and not too loud. It's just about right. I can still talk over it, even though I'm pretty close to the music. 
Perfect. That, that's, 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 that's important for us. <laughs> and hopefully that translates into the video that I can hear you. <laughs> yes, I can hear it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming thank out. You very and once much. again, your name? Jenny Bate, J E N I B A T E. And my. Uh, yeah, two four letter words. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you for interviewing me. It's and been a I hope to see you next year. And yes, I, I expect so. I expect to see more of your work and enjoy it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.